I'm here at the Philips 66 booth with Steven Strollo, field engineer for Philips. How are you doing, Steven? Good. How are you, Jeff? I want your help in dispelling some myths, specifically myths about multi-weight oils versus single-weight oils. And um, I've learned a ton from Philips 66 lubricants over this past year having to do with some of the benefits. And, and, and I'll say I was always a user of Philips Cross Country uh, XC20W50 and have had great results in it. But I didn't realize uh, some of the science that, that a lot of straight weights simply don't make sense because a multi-weight can do so much better about it. So could you explain one part of it, which is that if someone lives in a stable, moderate climate, uh, versus, let's say, somewhere that has wide temperature swings, that it's still, why it still makes sense for them to be using a multi-weight like 20W50? Great question. And, and, and let me start off by saying we make multi-weights and we make straight weights. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying what I'm about to say just because multi-weight is the Yeah, it's not versus group. a competition. You could sell them either one. That's right. That's right. So... You know, another thing I like to say is, when's the last time you saw a straight weight oil recommended for a car or truck? Yeah, never. <laughs> well, my 69 Camaro still had it in their service manual, and you know, straight weight or multi weight, but again, that was 1969. So, again, for the last, let's say, 30 years, there's not been a straight weight oil recommended for a car or truck for all the reasons I'm about to mention here in a minute. Uh, and the biggest advantage of using a multi-weight oil, regardless of what the temperature is, really, yeah. climatic-wise, whether you live in Minnesota versus South Florida, are the cold temperature flow properties associated with uh, a multi-weight oil. The primary way you control friction and wear in any sort of engine is just to keep your metal moving parts separated by a very thin film of oil. So the more quickly you develop that full film separation yeah. between your metal moving parts, the more quickly you have wear protection. So a lot of people assume that, well, I live in South Florida, I live in Phoenix or whatever, and it just doesn't get cold enough to see the advantages of a multi-weight oil, right? Well, <clears throat> actually at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, this is the viscosity of the multi-weight oil, this is the viscosity of the straight-weight oil, commercial grade 100, right? And you'll see that the multi-weight oil, even at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not particularly cold, is half as viscous as the straight-weight oil. Obviously, at lower temperatures, this disparity between the multi-weight oil and the straight-weight oil, as far as viscosity, is even going to be greater. So the point is, you don't need to have super low temperatures to see the advantages as far as low temperature flowability uh, with the multi-weight oil. Another reason that people will cite for not wanting to use a multi-weight oil compared to a straight-weight oil is that, well, that multi-weight oil is not going to be as thick at operating temperatures as a straight weight oil. So I don't want to use it, right? Over here in the far right, you'll see the viscosity at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not the sump temperature of the oil, but that is the temperature of the oil in the ring belt zone. And you'll also see a big scale change here as well. So the multi-weight in blue, the straight weight again, this gray color, the multi-weight is not twice as viscous. Again, there's a scale change. But the point is, it's about 10% thicker, right, than the straight weight oil at operating temperature. So there's, there's really not a sound reason to use a straight weight oil just about wherever you live. Yeah, it's something that I think that uh, being a mechanic and hearing that, it's just what people are used to. It's the, it's what they were told. It's this belief that, that, that it just, it, you're getting more of the good stuff, or it's being used at. At, at higher temperatures it works better but I think it's really important to see that these are all temperatures that your aircraft engine is experiencing from from startup let's say with preheating to you know what you're seeing at the part where it's going towards the oil cooler to other parts of the engine and to the area where it matters very much where you're you're actually at the combustion chamber you're in the you're you're providing a surface for the rings to glide over where sure. you are hitting super right. high temperatures like that when we think about it and um, and and so I think it makes a big difference the other thing that I've always noted is because it's really important to preheat an engine. Like, there's two ways I think that people think about oil and oil viscosity. One is the idea that I want the oil to be able to flow at a low temperature. I don't want it to be too thick, essentially, at a low temperature. And the other is, of course, you know, what happens at, at regular temperatures. But 
I look at that and I say, wait a minute, there's other problems. You need to be preheating because of metallic coefficients of different coefficients of expansion and interference inside the engine. So you shouldn't be starting your engine sure. at a low, low temperature to begin with. Right, right. And so there's a baseline there. It's really that temperature spread within the engine that you're showing on these charts. Exactly. Where there's one temperature inside the cooler, there's another temperature uh, on the other extreme at the piston. Right. And this shows that a multi viscosity oil makes a big difference for that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, there's another thing I also want to touch on when it comes to that because you guys have done a fair amount of testing when it comes to corrosion protection. And the actual, there's this I, I, this concept that, uh, which is accurate, that a coating of oil on metal parts while the engine is inactive provides corrosion protection there. And there's this thought process which seems intuitive, but it turns out isn't correct, that something that is thicker, like a straight weight oil at room temperature, um, well, that's going to coat better and that's going to protect my engine against corrosion. You guys did a bunch of testing that showed something different. Can you tell me about yeah, that? Yeah, that's true. And you're right. Intuitively, that does make sense. I mean, the, the straight weight oil at ambient temperatures is indeed thicker than a multi weight oil, right? I mean, that's inherent in the, you know, the oils themselves, their intrinsic properties. So again, the thought is that that thicker oil at ambient temperature, that straight weight oil, because it's thicker than a multi-weight oil, is going to be present on your parts at a greater film thickness, which is our primary way of, of providing rust and corrosion protection, the film thickness of oil that's on a part. Yep. But again, we did some testing in our laboratory in, um, in Oklahoma where we took metal coupons and immersed them in hot straight-weight oil and hot multi-weight oil measured the weight of the coupons before the immersion, right? And then measured the weight of the coupons after all the oil dripped off, right? Mm -hmm. So, and the difference between the, the pre-dip coupon yeah. and the drip dried coupon would be the film thickness, right? And at the end of 48 hours, there was no difference in the film thickness using the scale method I just described between the multi weight oil and the straight weight oil. The test went on for a full seven days. 48 hours isn't very long, right? Yeah. Test went on for a full seven days, but at the end of two days, 48 hours, we didn't see any difference between the straight weight oils and the multi weight oils. We also have a device that indirectly measures the fill thickness of the oil on a metal part, which confirm the scale method, which I just described. And that is, again, there's no difference in film thickness between the two. So that's another, let's call it a myth, yep. you know, that is. And, and I remember seeing true. those charts, and they actually showed, like, r really early on, there was a difference that sort of favored, like within hours or minutes, that favored the straight weight. But then as time went on through those days, even past the 48 hours, the multi-weight performed better. It was kind of interesting. Performed better or didn't perform any worse. I, yeah. I can't remember the data. It sounds like you've looked at it more recently than I yeah, did. I, I thought it was opposite of what was intuitive. So that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool to see. But the bottom line is, I, you know, we still can't see a reasonable reason, you know, good reason as to why someone would use a straight weight oil instead of a multi weight oil uh, when they're available. And again, you sell both, so it's 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 just it just makes more sense in so many different areas. You're preaching to the choir. All right. Well, thanks for helping us do a little bit of myth busting here at Sun and Fun 2025. Stephen, thanks. I really appreciate you it. You bet. And uh, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight, and I wish you all blue skies.